If you're crazy enough to hunt birds with a bow, you have some options for points. So like this one is just a uh, old pistol brass. You pretty much just glue it on your arrow. It's like Fred Bear era stuff. You see how it's all messed up. You could just use like a, there's flat filled points. There's normal filled points. There's crazy machine looking ones, judo points, just a rubber blunt. So all of these are options. And then you also got your snarrows that are specifically for birds. So the idea is they like rip wings and feather or heads or whatever off. And they come in a couple different sizes. So I've tried all of these and there's things that I like and don't like about all of them, but I came up with a brilliantly bad idea. What if you got something similar to this and you put it on one of these? So when my experience, whenever you shoot these, a lot of times these wires just bend back and then your best killing spot is right here but if you could make that a little bit bigger maybe put some sharper edges on it i think you might have a little bit better odds of harvesting your bird you would come up with something like this so this is pretty much similar to a snaro except it's got a little bit more of a head to it so let me walk you through how I made this and we'll see if it's a good idea or a bad idea. I'm definitely not a machinist, but I have this old Chinese lathe mill combo that I got off of Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or somewhere like that. And so I'm just playing around, I always play around with it. Probably taking off too big of chunks right there but it seemed to be working. So all I did was I got a piece of half inch round that was just in my scrap pile. And I start turning it down, trying to get the main diameter. And I, I'm not really measuring anything. I'm just kind of putting rough marks. So I kind of have some sort of reference. And then of course, if you don't have a good finish, you can always uh, use a file to make it seem like you know what you're doing. So I just left the head the thickest, you know, just like anything else you would machine. You just start with the thickest part and then keep working your way down. Just kind of removing stuff. I don't even have good lathe tools. And that is definitely not how you're supposed to bevel stuff, but it seemed to work. Then I just got an old die and uh, this is 832, so all threads are 832. And little trick, I don't even know if it's actually a trick, but you can use your tail stock to make sure that it goes on straight. So, and I'm just turning it by hand. If you're super brave, actually, you should probably never like turn the lathe on unless you have a lathe set up for that. And then of course, you gotta fix it, but you gotta find your parts first, which is sometimes the biggest challenge. So there's just an old insert. Check it, seemed to be work seemed to be the right diameter and then uh you could use the parting tool which would be the smart thing but uh just a good old angle grinder with a cutoff wheel will work just watch your eyes because you can uh those things explode and they go right into your eyeball and then just reface it because your cut's not going to be very good and then take it down to whatever dimensions you want And then if you're gonna do this right, you'd probably make a tool for uh, getting the inside of that out. And then if you're gonna do this right, you would, uh, you'd probably bevel it, like you use your slide to bevel it or use a beveling guide. Or if you're like me, you just etch a sketch it and get it close and then file it to where it matches how you want it. So there I am, I'm just, uh, trying to get a little bit of a concave groove in there just so that way you have a sharp sharper edge to work with so you're pretty much just making kind of a cutting edge on it and then i was going to set this up in the mill and make them accurate and straight but putting those grooves in there really this is just to make another cutting edge and then to remove some weight so i just use a chainsaw file and just kind of eyeball it the, these aren't because you're gonna have wires and stuff sticking off of it they're not gonna be super balanced so i wasn't super critical 
And uh, I don't plan on shooting this more than about 10 yards, and so it's not very precise. It, it's uh, it, it just kind of is what it is. Then to make a match, I, uh, I just measured off where I was going to put the holes. And what, to drill the holes, I just checked them up in a, or I just put them in a drill press. Once again, if you used a mill, it'd be better. And it's actually so cold, my battery, you know, see the boogers dripping? You, my battery was dying on the camera. So I didn't even realize I didn't get any footage of the, the drill press, but it's pretty straightforward. There's nothing to it. Just drilling a hole, just centered and then making them straight across from each other. I guess perpendicular would be the right word. So this wire, this is a piano wire or music wire. There's different names for it, but it's pretty much as high carbon steel wire. So that way it, it's really stiff and it it's kind of hard to work with, but it, it keeps its shape. So that's what they make springs out of and stuff. And getting a, <laughs> get, get, remembering how to do this in the order and then getting these loops lined out is actually a little bit tricky and it took a little bit of time but you just kind of go the direction that the wire wants to go if you try to fight it and go the other way it it just turns into a mess and it starts kinking so you just go the direction that the wire naturally wants to go and you just keep working it around working it through and then eventually you get into the right right shape or size and you can make them whatever you wanted to Once you get it lined out how you want it, I, I just sl slide the wire through and then bend them over to hold them in place. And then I cut them off later. And you just kind of crimp them down and then trim them some more. It doesn't take much to hold those wires in place. And actually, I, I even played around with putting it like a dab of JB weld and I thought about soldering the top part so that way they didn't slide. But it, it seemed to make no difference. It seemed to hold up just fine. And there you have it. The last thing I did was I just got some cold bluing stuff just to make them not shiny. There's no reason to do this. Make them not shiny, maybe prevent them from rusting a little bit. But that's pretty much all there was to it. If you're curious on the material, I just had some scrap half inch round stock around. And then I had to order this from the Rainforest website. And this is music wire or some people call it piano wire uh, it has to be some kind of spring or like high carbon steel or they're just gonna you can't just use regular wire because they'll never hold up looking at a couple things real quick before we go try it they're a little bit bigger than the snaro snaro i think that's a brand name so i don't know who actually manufactures them uh i read somewhere that these should be about 300 grains which this one's 277 the ones that i made they came out they're a little bit heavier because they're a little bit bigger they are 290 and then this this big one the six inch one is going to be 338 so i'm i'm kind of right in the middle but i still have that bigger cutting edge if you know, like if you center one and not just hit it on a wing or a head or something like that. Uh, if you're looking for dimensions, this one is about two and a quarter to the end of the threads. This head right here is just right at half an inch. And like I said, about 290 grains, which is super heavy. So, I'm not expecting these to fly very good, 
but these ones don't fly very good either. So I'm gonna I have them set up. I'm gonna try some flu flus, just some other stuff, and we're going to see kind of how they fly, how it works, especially compared to something like this. It was negative two at my house yesterday. So I decided to come down here to uh, Pancho Villa's old stomping grounds to try out these bird point things. So there's usually some quail around here. I'm just gonna call and work my way up here and see if we can find some. Well, it didn't take long, and there's a huge group of scalies. I have no idea how much you could see, but uh, I shot twice, missed. Uh, one of the points, the wires got bent up, and then the other arrow, I lost the knock, but other than that, they're actually holding up pretty well. I was chasing around, I passed, like, I could have shot more, but they're just in a rock pile, and even though I don't expect these things to last, I would at least like to get them through the day to see how they're going to work. These little guys are tough. It's pretty hard to hit these little guys. And you can tell I keep finding them in the rocks. So I'm trying to get close, make decent shots, but like sub 10 yards. And uh, yeah, I missed again. So I'm gonna just head down here. Hopefully we can find some in the bottom where it's not so rocky. Maybe I'll take some further shots. <clears throat> I'm not close to any roads. Would have had a rough day if they lost their cane. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. I've been out here in the desert for the last two days trying to kill a quail with a bow. And I've done it before, but this is the first time I put like 100% effort for two straight days in a heavily hunted but high quail population area. And it is tough. Like getting close to the quail, because they're always moving, even if you're sneaking up on them, even if they don't know you're there, they're still moving around and then I've tried shooting them out of the air, I've tried shooting them on the ground, didn't really get very good video, I gave up on videoing at one point. Um, but I also have a javelina tag and so I've been chasing javelinas kind of on the side. So I don't know a real world application for these. It, just, it doesn't make sense. Like is there a bow hunting only area where you can bird hunt? 
may be there, but realistically, unless you're a way better shot than me, or you just want a super good challenge, it'd be a good, fun thing to do. But these things, they held up better than I expected. Like, I was hitting rocks, because scalies, they always get into rocks. Shooting them through bushes, and they're bent. Some of them, a couple of them bent, which I expect that. The wire held up pretty okay. But I don't know if they really work. I'm assuming they would if I would hit one. Um, so yeah, if you're crazy, try it. If not, I don't know, try a shotgun, because that's what I'm about to do. This is a bunch of quail right down here making noise while I'm talking. And I did throw a shotgun in at the last minute, and so I'm gonna, I, I literally, I need to be on the road to go home right now. But I'm gonna go make one little loop with a shotgun and see what happens.